Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss Deep Code question 652 that says find duplicate subtrace. So here you are given the root of a binary tree and you need to return all duplicate subtrace. Uh, and a two tree are said to be duplicate if they have same structure and same node values. Correct? And for each duplicate subtree, you need to return the root node of any one of them. So let's say here, as you can see the two and four, and here is two and four, so these two are duplicate subtrees. So for this duplicate subtrees, you need to return root of any one of them. So you need to return two of these two or either these two. So you might be uh, you might find this confusing that here, instead of root, the output has two comma four. Right, as you can see, the complete tree, not just the root. But this is the representation, means internally, uh, this, uh, so this solution class is processing the root and printing the complete tree. See, we don't have to take care of this. We simply have to return roots, right? We will simply return roots. As this line says, for each duplicate subtrace, we have to return root, not the complete tree or and all the values. We simply return here two. Instead of two and four, we will simply return two. Got it? So these things are cleared now. This is a bit vague or confusing thing. But yeah, make sure yourself clear that we only have to return uh, the root of a duplicate subtree. Correct? Okay. Now moving forward. As you guys can see here that uh, this 2 and 4. So this is what? 2 uh, with left child 4. And here it is what? 2 with left child 4. Both are same. Correct? And uh, right child uh, and 2 with a right child null and here also 2 with a right child null. So as you guys can see that since 2 is a parent here with left child 4, right child null, here also 2 is a parent with left child 4, right child null. So we can say that both these subtrees are what? Both these subtrees are same, they are duplicate. They have the same values as well, same structure. See structure also matter that if we had uh, something like this 2 with left child 4 and another with 2 with a right child 4, then they are different, they are structurally different. So we have to check both the structure as well as value. So yeah, uh, here both are same for these two subtrees. Then we can say two is one potential root. Two is one root. Now the second thing is four. Four here is also there. Here is also there, and here is also there. So four are duplicates because it's both left and right, right child. And here also left and right child. Same thing here. So we can say four is the second duplicate subtree, and that's why we written two comma four here. For this, we will written two comma four. Okay. Now here. Uh, here, as I already said here, that here it is two left child one and another thing is two right child one. That so these two are sep uh, structurally different. So we can't count two one and two one as a subtree. So that was the reason that we can't count that. And yeah, we remain only with one with left child right child null. And here also left child right child null. So they both are structurally same as well as their values are same. So one is our answer. Okay. Similarly here uh, 2 and 3, 2 with a left child 3 and this is also 2 with a left child 3. So we got uh, 2 as one answer and second answer is for 3. 3 with both left and right child null and here also left and right child null. So that's why we got two subtrees with a, a same value, same structure and that means they are duplicates. One is parent uh, with a node 2 and another is parent with a node 3. Correct. So let me give you some more example for better understanding. So here what would be the answer? I want you to guess what would be the answer here. Here our answer would be only 4. Yeah? This, this, this is 2 left child 4 and this is 2 right child 4. They can't be same. So our only answer is 4. This node and this node. Okay. Now if you take a look here. What would be our answer here? Think, uh, try to think by yourself. Right? What would be the answer here? See, one answer here would be this. This complete subtree. Second uh, means these are duplicate. So we will answer, give 2 as one of our uh, root with a duplicate subtree. The second root is 4, this this 4 and this 4, right? 4. And another is this 5, this 5 and this 5. They are also duplicate. So here there are 3 duplicate roots whose subtrees are, uh, whose ha who have sub the duplicate subtrees, right? Okay, got it. Now if you take a look at this example, you will see here that 1 uh, left child is 2, right child is, uh, uh, and uh, with the 2's left child is 4. Okay, see so 1 left child 2 uh, and with the left child 4. Now here you will see this, okay. Now same thing is here, okay. Can this be counted as a subtree? No. These are not subtrees. Why? Because a subtree is a complete tree. You can't take one part of it. For this, a subtree would be whole tree. And for this, a subtree would be this whole tree. You can't count a one part or the left part as a subtree. Got it? So yeah, it means a subtree with a root of this one is a this complete. A subtree with a root this one is a complete tree. So that's why here you can't count this and this as a 
separate subtrees. So here our answer would be only this four. Correct, only four. Four would be only our answer. So yeah, I hope you guys understood the question till now. That what is known as subtree, what is known as duplicate subtree, and uh, and yeah, how we need to maintain the structure as well as the value. Okay. So I hope you the things are clear till now. Now moving ahead. See, we need to maintain the structure. This is one hard thing to do. Okay, now we have to think that how we will maintain the structure of a tree. See, uh, for let's say for this given tree, if you have to maintain structure, uh, uh, then if you have to maintain that uh, structure, then how you will do? You will need something like two left child four, right child null, something like this, uh, right? Similarly, one left child two, uh, whose left child is four, and something like this. Like uh, two's right child is four, right? Correct. Yeah. So something like this, you need to store uh, whose uh, two's left child is what, uh, left child is what, and this right child is what. Similarly, here right child is what, left child is what. So you need to so store something like this. Correct. Then only you will be able to store structure. So what you can do is that uh, for this given tree, we uh, see for a traversing a tree. What what are the two methods that we have? One is breadth first search. Second is depth first search. Now we need to uh, we need to find uh, the structure. This two left is what right is what. Then do you think is breadth first search uh, useful here? See in breadth first search we are traversing from this. Then you will traverse two and three. Then you will traverse four and two. Like in the uh, in the label order we are traversing. But there is no such thing to store uh, like no labels to store here. Instead, what the depth first search does is it traverses from one to two, two to four. Okay, and then it returns some value. It returns some value, value to two, value to one. So this is how DFS will work. So and and while returning, we will return the value as with the structure. We will return the value with the structure. So here we will use depth first search, right? And in in tree inside the depth first search also we have some techniques that is in order, pre order, and post order. Okay, but and what we will use? We will use here post order. I will tell you the reason. See, uh, let me again draw some tree. Like, okay, so now here, let like, this is the tree, and let me initially only tell you the answer. There are two uh, two roots that are same. This two and three, two and three, and this three and three. So there are two uh, roots. We have which have which have duplicate subtrees. Now for this tree, what uh, what I have told you, we have to use DFS. So uh, why to use DFS? It is clear now. That's the second. The second thing I told you, we will use post order. See, in pre order, what we do. We uh, in pre-order we traverse the node, then left and right. In in order we traverse the left node, the root and the right node. But in post-order, what we do? We traverse the left node, right node, and the current node. Okay. In post, what we do? Left, left node, right node, and current. Pre, current, left, right, and in order left, current, right. Now let's say I want a structure of two. Structure of these two. I am talking about these two. Okay, of two. Then what it would be? Uh, it would be uh, left child two, left child is three, and right child is none. Something like this. Okay, correct. Now I want let's say I want structure of this four. Then I will get a uh, structure like three is. Uh, uh, I will uh, not three. I will get four left child two whose left child is three, right child is none, and again right child is none. This is none and this is none. Okay, I will get something like this. So that means here I uh, so so to get the structure of four, I need some structure of the left child as well as the right child. Correct to get the complete structure of four, I need to traverse both the left subtree and the right subtree. Then only I will get the structure of the complete subtree rooted at four. Correct. So here also I have to traverse the left subtree. The right subtree. Then only I will get the complete uh, structure of this uh, tree rooted at two. Got it? So that's why we have to use post order traverser because we want values from the left subtree and the right right subtree. Correct? So I hope you guys are clear till now. That first thing why we are using DFS. It is a traverser technique that we have to use. Second thing is why we are using only post order traverser. Things are clear? Okay. Now the things are simple. See from every node what we will return we will return its value. Let's say here, here it it will return. We will return what? We will return string. Okay. If uh, if 
like let's say for this three we will return three left child nothing right child nothing for this two we will return two left child three whose left child nothing right child nothing and and the right child of two is also nothing correct so this will be returned to what this will be returned to this one correct now here this will return what three with left child null and right child null means nothing this will return two with left child three whose left and right and null and this right of two is also null so only right and this will return what we will return here four whose left child is two and this complete thing this complete thing here and again right child nothing so this is how we will return some answer to each of this each of uh, uh, from the children to the parent we will return something correct and if the frequency is twice so let's say here what we have written two uh, we have written two left child three a left child three and whose left and right are null and null and r so here also what we will written we will written two with left child three and three's left and right is null and two's right is also null so this as you guys can see the frequency of this become twice and whenever the frequency become twice we will store this we will store in answer and here also 3 lr here also it would be 3 lr okay so the frequency of 3 lr becomes what becomes 2 frequency becomes 2 so whenever the frequency become 2 we will store answer store this node correct simple as it is so yeah as i told you that we are using we are we have to store the frequency then only we will we can say it is duplicate or not right we are maintaining the structure and the value and if the structure and the value repeats then we can say uh, we have we found the duplicate and that's that's why the frequency is 2 we will store the answer so in order to maintain this frequency we will uh, use one unordered map okay so till now we have discussed many things uh, first thing is uh, first thing is why we are using dfs second it's post order traversal uh, third is how to maintain the structure by using the string and left and right storing something like this fourth thing that we will use the frequency map and fifth thing whenever the frequency become 2 we will store the answer okay now based on this observation and conclusion that we have made we will write the code code is very simple here right okay see let me if uh, explain you the code so here this is what this is uh, the frequency map that we have used to store the string along with the frequency and this is our answer now this is the dfs uh, function that we have re uh, uh, written the, and that will return string okay so initialize initialize i s1 as null s2 as null so what are this s1 and s2 so S1 is a structure of left subtree, S2 is a structure of right subtree and current is a current node. Okay. So if we have something on left, then we will travel to left. If we have something on right, we, have to, we will travel to right. And then we will make this complete structure. Structure is what? Current node plus uh, nodes on left plus nodes on right. Okay. And if this frequency becomes 2, then we will simply push the back the root uh, in our answer, right? We will simply push the root to our answer. And we will return uh, this string so here what we are doing is we are traversing the left and to then to the right and then we are making some and then we are making some implementation or we then and at the end we are processing the current node right at the end we are processing this current root so that's why we this is a post order traversal correct and yeah uh, i hope these things are clear and also let me try to show you uh that what we are storing in this frequency map so let me show you that it dot first so guys as you can see that for this subtree this complete tree what we have stored see we have stored this 4 LR that is 4 left and right uh, let me also try to print the frequency for your better understanding So here as you can see the 4 LR that means 4 with the left null and right null so there are 8 frequencies 3 were this this and this correct then we have this 2 L 4 L RR so that means 2 left child is 4 uh, and 4 left and right is null and again 2 right is null so this is this represent this subtree as well as this subtree whose frequency is 2 so yeah it, there are two subtrees as you can see now here this 3 left child 2 whose left child is 4 now 4 left and right child are null 2's right child is null and 3's right child is 4 whose left and right is null okay so for a subtree rooted at 3 this is complete subtree as i have told you earlier that you can't take this as a subtree you have to take the complete and whose frequency is 1 and this is what this is the complete string so i hope you guys understood that how we are storing the structure as well as the value with the help of the string right 
uh, and yeah, how, how, why and how we build the complete intuition for this question. So yeah, that's all for this video. Not talking about the time and space complexity. The time complexity here would be big of n square because see this string representation will take big of n and we are traversing and means we are doing that for all n nodes. So yeah, the overall time complexity would be big of n square and the space complexity would be also big of n square because the string length can be big of n and so the complete or unordered map will take big of n square time complexity. So yeah, that's for the time and space complexity for this approach. So yeah, that's all for this video. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. And if you have still any doubts, then do let me know in the comment section. Thank you.